Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. You know, when most people think of Japanese horror, they think of unreal ghost girls crawling out of wells. But Japan actually has a very rich history of graphically violent horror movies. I mean, you could go all the way back to, like, Jigoku in 1960. And there are plenty of gory flicks that came after that, leading all the way up to the present day, really. You know, stuff like Shogun Sadism from 1976, the guinea pig films from the 80s, Entrails of a Virgin from 1986, the All Night Long trilogy during the 90s, Naked Blood from 1995, Kichiku Dai Kai from 97, Psycho the Snuff Reels from 1998, and so on. From what I've seen, a good chunk of these types of films came out in the 80s and 90s, so whenever I see a Japanese horror film nowadays that gets nasty and actually kind of stomach churning in its violence, I kind of smile and, and appreciate the fact that they are continuing this tradition. And boy oh boy, do I have one for you tonight. This is my review of Brutal, appropriately titled, a Japanese horror film from 2017. A serial killer targets women and searches for meaning in life. That's the plot for you. Now, the brutality of this film begins immediately. This is pretty nasty stuff right from the start. The film opens in the killer's apartment where he already has multiple girls tied up. And then he proceeds to emotionally and physically abuse them. As just one example from early on in the film, this guy beats a girl to death with his fists. So... I give this movie credit. The opening 10 minutes definitely does their job to set the tone. This is not pleasant stuff. There's a lot of gore and bloody violence in this film. A few images are actually pretty shocking. The makeup effects are pretty impressive as well, so that helps to keep the tone pretty, pretty dark here. Brutal can definitely hold up and hold its own against some of the more violent Japanese films from the 80s and 90s, so that's good. But with that said, there are certain elements to this film that make it kind of interesting to watch. You know, if you plan on watching this, do not read anything about the film. Even a simple plot synopsis, because it could spoil it for you. For you. Um, or at least, I don't know if it's a spoiler, but certain things happen, you know, during the end of the first third of the film that I was not expecting. So it's good to go in cold, I think, with this. The script does decide to explore these disturbing events from a different angle at times. I'm going to be vague about that. And that makes it pretty interesting. More interesting than you might expect for a film this violent. There are some psychological aspects that I enjoyed. The dialogue is actually surprisingly good at times. There's some actually some good conversations in this. And there's even one scene of black humor that works well as well. So... There's something to this film that's a little bit, uh, it's got a little bit more going for it than just the violence. Visually, it does use a slight tracking glitch effect, almost as if you were watching it on a theater screen and there was like a little bit of a tracking glitch, almost like a grindhouse type uh, aesthetic to it, which can at times get a bit distracting, but you get used to it and it doesn't happen all the time. Uh, did not have a huge problem with it, but it was there. In terms of music, there's a very like low-key rhythmic tone in the background that's pretty creepy, so I think that worked. Now, in terms of possible flaws, there are a few things that came to mind here. Number one, you know, certain plot elements, like how does this guy lure these attractive women to his apartment in the first place? His methods themselves are never really shown. I mean, I assume that they're prostitutes or escorts. You know, you can easily get into a location, but... I don't think that that's actually explained in the film. Not a big deal, but whatever. Another thing. How does no one in this apartment complex, like, hear the screams coming from his apartment? You know, it would have been nice to get some type of an explanation. Like, maybe it's mostly vacant or something like that, but they don't really explain that either. Third, sometimes knife attacks don't hurt the person as much as they probably should. I mean, there's some knife attacks or, like, uh, object attacks and stuff in this film that go on for a little while. <laughs> and it's pretty brutal. But, like, you're like, man, this person should be dead by now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a little bit of that in this as well. So there are a few uh, 
slightly unrealistic aspects of the film as well. But again, this film doesn't give you a lot of time to think about that stuff. It's only 66 minutes long in total. And that kind of leads to like a fourth aspect that I was thinking of as well in terms of possible flaws. Because I mentioned that there is some interesting content in this from a character standpoint, a character interaction standpoint, a dialogue standpoint. I don't think the film is long enough. And you don't hear me say that much. 95% of the time, I think movies are too long. You know, even really good movies probably could have cut a minute out. You know what I mean? That's just the way I am with films. I think they just, there's always fat that could get cut out. But this movie, <clears throat> I think is too short. I think they could have easily made a one hour and 40 minute film out of this if they expanded some of the character interaction and the dynamics and some of the uh, development a little bit more. Easily. 66 minutes, you could add another 34 minutes on there. I think that would, that would have made this film like legit awesome if you would have uh, added some of that uh but still i recommend this movie man if you're into nasty films like you know those old school japanese flicks from the 80s and 90s you know some of that stuff uh i say check this one out because it's got the nastiness and it has some interesting elements to it as well sprinkled in that i had a uh, i was engaged watching this which you don't always get with nasty films so this is available on Tubi streaming in the United States. It's a this is a website, you know, T U B I. I've been using it uh, more often lately. There seem to be some uh, rare films on there, so it's on there for free, and it's also available on DVD. I think I saw a DVD release of this, which really surprised me. So I might actually add it to my collection because it's good enough to be added. Takashi Hirose directed this. Just in case you have trouble finding it. Because the, uh, the title is so uh, generic, brutal. Just type in brutal 2017 Takashi Hirose and you'll, you'll find it pretty fast. Check it out if you're adventurous. And as always, I'll see you next time.